Hey everybody. Here's that power supply out at Dell system that had the Core 2 Quad Q6600 CPU. This power supply has some bad capacitors in it. And it's manufactured by Hypro, which pretty much explains the reason from the bad caps. Because Hypro seems to just love Tipo for some reason. So anyways, let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing open. I mean, probably what I'll do with it is I might scrap it for parts. I might um, dig out the soldering iron and unsolder what I want out of it and scrap the rest of it. Because the thing is, it's a proprietary design. I can't use it on anything else. I mean, cable-wise, it's compatible, but form factor, it's not. It's just weird. <laughs> and I already have a good one of these up on my um, up in my stash, just in case I need one. So that being said, let's see if we can figure out how to open this thing. And we gotta get the suicide screwdriver because the one I got now isn't getting it open. But I can't find the suicide screwdriver, so I gotta use a different one. For those who don't know what the suicide screwdriver is, it's the one that's pretty much eight in one, has all the different bits that fold out. The reason why I call it a suicide screwdriver is because those pieces like to like um, fold up on you when you're bearing down. So anyways, let's try a different screwdriver. This one's doing a little bit better. A little tiny screwdriver. It's pretty much the normal when it comes to high pro power supplies. The screws are extremely tight. And don't get me wrong, high pro makes great power supplies. If they would just use better capacitors, they'd be even better. This power supply uses a mixture of caps from brands like LTEC, um, Elite, Tipo, and I think a couple of others. This is my first time actually looking inside the thing. I just tell you why I observed from looking through the vents. I think that's it. Yep, it's already starting to open up. This power supply has multiple layers of PCBs in it. Because of the way it's designed. The primary side's coming out with the top of this. Might be able to see it there. It's got a little PCB that has the main caps among other things on it too so apparently I have to take out the voltage selector switch to get this to come out further so let me go ahead and do that yeah these kinds of power supplies are known to be a real pain to get inside of it can be very aggravating Slight improvement. Yes, guys, this thing has a total mixture of ca of Captain. I gotta unplug this white cord here. Well, this white plug. 
this is why I would strongly encourage that you give power supplies like this one a good bit of time to discharge before working inside of them because in order to unplug the white connector I just mentioned about it is right next to the primary capacitors so you always gotta be careful when working in units like this what's funny is the voltage selector switch has thick gauge wiring and the power switch, I mean the the power leads, I believe is what they are, have center gauge wiring. Anyways, that being said, get this weird thing open. Now you can get you a good view of the inside of it. Here is what consists of part of the primary over here actually that heat sink there has the bridge rectifier attached to it I think no that's, no, that's actually a switching transistor the rectifier bridge is only secondary I mean the little PCB that I'll show you here in a moment over there's your main transformer and 5 volt standby transformer and here's a look at your secondary heat sink definitely got some definitely got a lot of components in this one this is a 280 watt supply as you can see when they get you a better focus you'll probably be able to see it better almost every TPO capacitor in this power supply is bulging if not already leaking except for one there's one back there that's not actually leaking now this power supply has a few caps I might take out of it for reuse there's a 92 millimeter fan this power supply has an IC 5 volt standby switcher it's actually the same one that was in the eco element power supply that was in the mid tower deluxe it's the Tiny switch, I believe the name of it was TNY278PN, the same model. This power supply, I think it uses DC to DC conversion for the 3.3 volt rail. Okay, let's see a main coil back there and some, some Pi filter coils in the caps, but I see a few caps over here what appears to be a transistor a small coil and the heat sink I'm not really sure about that if it's actually a DC to DC conversion but so far in terms of capacitors I have seen okay I've seen LTEC TPO Elite and OST so that means I'm going to show you the primary Part of this power supply, no, actually, the rectification portion of this power supply, or better yet, the rectification and cleaning of this, the cleanup stage of this power supply. Your AC comes into this little PCB here. Get your bridge rectifier. You have your EMI filtering, your fuse, primary capacitors, passive PFC coil. Well, with a doubler circuit with the um, power with the selector switch there, and then this PCB sends out DC over to here to start the primary side um, switching stage, and then of course it goes through your transformers to your secondary rectification side. And of course, gets filtered out again and distributed to your computer. Now, it's kind of a quick little run through of how ATX power supply works. But yeah, I think I'll just scrap this one because I don't really 
I don't really feel like fixing it because I got one up there that works and I don't have a very high demand for these kinds of power supplies, these proprietary units. It'll be a half decent source of parts for me. I believe this power supply has a combination of a PWM and supervisory chip all in one. It's a well trend. W, um, let's see. Can't really tell for sure. WT7505, I believe it is. It's right there. Straight in front of you. But, anyways. I guess before we end this video, I can show you the um, spec label. Now, of course, if this was a standard PS2 sized power supply, it'd be worth fixing. Because the, the outputs are half decent on it for a lower end system. There's your spec label. Let me get you a look of the close look at the outputs. Pause of the use specs. So anyways, high pro 280 watt power supply. A look inside of it. Okay, I decided to add on a little bit of extra footage into this video of the power supply after I tore it apart. Anyways, here is the PFC coil and the EMI filtering rectification. Um, PCB. Here's another good look at it. Has two 560 microfarad capacitors. The bridge rectifier. Let me see if I can tell what amperage it is. It appears to be. I believe it's an 8 amp rectifier. So, definitely overbuilt there. There's your NTC thermistor for inrush current limiting. Fuse. Two X caps, two coils. And this blue thing there is not a Y cap. That's actually in a um, that's actually an MOV, a varistor. It's a big one. Can definitely take some big surges. The capacitor surprisingly are actually what's um, I believe what's um, shrink craft over here. And of course, the big thing again that's a varistor because the PCB says ZNR1, and there are two more varistors between the capacitors where you normally find them. Those are labeled as ZR, ZNR2 and ZNR3. So now, for a look at the main PCB that has a um, primary switching side and the secondary rectification side in your 5 volt standby. Have a look at this. Doesn't this look familiar? Remember the Logsys power supply? Well, at least we know Hypro does a better job on manufacturing their power supplies. And again, they had this foam under here and also under this PCB. There's a piece of foam over there. Now let me flip this over so I can have a look. I've confirmed this power supply actually has five different brands of capacitors on it. Earlier I said it just had Elite and um, Tipo and I think, yeah, Tipo LTEC. So I used to think it just had three and it actually has five different brands. It has Elite on the main side. It has some Tipos which are the bulging ones with the exception of one back there and it's not bulging. We have quite a few LTEX, one right there, and a bunch of small LTEX all around the board. We have an OST there in the center, the big one. It's a 3300 microfarad, 16 volt capacitor, probably one of the biggest caps on the secondary side. And we even have a Chemicon KZE capacitor, 16 volt, 2200 microfarad cap. So we have a we have a variety of five different brands of capacitors on this thing. Talk about a big mixture. This thing is loaded on the secondary side. 
rectification. Again, I'm not sure how the 2.3 volt rail does its thing. It probably uses DC to DC conversion. Though, again, I'm not sure. Because I'm seeing lots of components on the heatsink. I'm seeing a separate component over here by itself. So it's really unknown. And if I didn't mention about the connectors earlier, here they are. It's your main 24 pin connector. We have two SATAs, one here and one here, a floppy, one 4 pin Molex, and one 4 pin CPU power connector. So, not a whole lot of connectors for this thing either. Of course, it was proprietarily designed for those Dell computers. So anyways, that's an overview of this power supply. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.